Good morning, friends. In this video, I wanted to share with you what our current homeschool rhythm is looking like, and I thought I would do it in the form of a day in the life. So this is a day in the life from the end of January in 2022. I currently have a third grader, a first grader, a two-year-old, and as of the filming of this video, a eight-month-old baby. We start our mornings pretty slow with a lot of free time for the kids. My husband makes us all breakfast, and by 9 a.m. I would like us all to have eaten and gotten dressed and picked up a little bit, and I also like to get a load of laundry moving. At nine, we start piano practice. My first grader starts. He just started piano lessons this past fall. And my third grader follows. She started in first grade, so this is her third year playing. I try to be nearby while I'm feeding the baby so that I can hear them, if not see them. And that way I can encourage them and help them if needed. Really more so keep them on task. Then we all come together for circle time. We actually start with calendar time, which is one of my toddler's favorite parts of the day. We move the ring on our calendar and we'll often count the numbers up to the current day and update the weather and the moon phase and such. The rest of our circle time includes seasonal poems and songs and finger plays, and occasionally a picture book or two. The Furry Ones by Eileen Fisher. I like the furry ones, the waggy ones, the purry ones, the hoppy ones that hurry. The glossy ones, the saucy ones, the sleepy ones, the leafy ones, the mousy ones that scurry. The snuggly ones, the huggly ones, the never, never ugly ones, all soft and warm and furry. What do you think that's about, guys? Animals. Animals? You want to see the picture? Yay, dog! The carpenters are working, pounding the nails, and we love to watch them working, pounding the nails, and they go bang, we go clang, they go bang, we go clang, until they pound the nails, and Finished at last. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes. Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes. Silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. We always end circle time sharing one thing we're grateful for that day. And then we move to the table to start our individual schoolwork. My two older children each have a individual notebook and at the beginning of each week I will write out their individual assignments for each day that week and then they will take those out first. I try to get them started on things that they can do by themselves while I get the toddler set up with an activity. Thank you.
start making lunch when my son is done with his subjects. My daughter still has to do typing, I believe, and she can do that herself while I feed the baby. I make lunch for them and myself, give the baby some baby food, and then I retreat into the bedroom for a little bit to nurse him. Some days I use this middle of the day break to do some cleaning and some days we go outside. Today it is freezing and actually it just started snowing and the individual school took a little longer than it does most days. I think they both just needed some extra help on the math today so it took a little longer. So I'm not going to do anything extra during this break, just feed everybody and nurse the baby. I try to encourage my toddler to sit in my bedroom with us calmly so I can keep an eye on her, but more often she is playing with her big siblings and I ask them to keep an eye on her for me. So now that the baby is fed and happy, it is time to work with my two-year-old a bit. So the baby gets some free play time on the floor, he's getting more mobile, and I do some Montessori-inspired activities with the two-year-old. Today she is moving pom-poms with tongs, and we worked with some sound objects. I then get everybody back together in the living room to continue on with family school subjects. These look a little different every day. We have a bunch of subjects going at once and so we never get to them all in one day and most of them we just get to once a week. So today we are starting with a map drill. We try to do this several times a week. Okay, Georgia. artist study. We are learning about Velasquez. So we look at a piece of his art and I have the kids tell me what they think it represents and what they notice. And then we read a book. Okay. All right. Go ahead and tell me about the picture. Are you starting? Um, I noticed there was smoke in the background and then a fire. Is it a fire? What do you think? Do you think it was a fire? What do you think is happening in the picture? I think they're fighting. Okay. Because they're fighting, what do you think the smoke is? Guns. Yeah, I guess from, it's probably from a battle then, right? What are the... Kiara, what do you want to add? I don't actually think they're fighting. What do you think? Why not? What is happening? What are they doing? It looks more like they're talking. 
Hmm, interesting. So what could be happening in this scene? Maybe they're getting ready to fight together. You think they're forming an alliance? Yeah, probably. So Breda was a city in Holland that was seized by Spanish forces in the Eighty Years' War, also known as the Dutch War for Independence. Velasquez was a personal friend of the Spanish general responsible for the victory and painted this picture as a tribute not only to Spain but to his friend. This picture is also known as the Lances because of the... So it's like a tree, it's just like a truce after the battle. This one is more of a fun book that we're doing today. Katie and the Spanish Princess. We already read a biography of Velasquez. I also have my older two draw approximate copies of their favorite uh, pieces by Velasquez that we've looked at. Now I'm not looking for anything fantastic here, just a general idea of where the objects in the picture are. And of course my toddler loves to color along with us. For science this week, we are studying amphibians. I am not doing a large unit on this, we're just spending the one week on amphibians. So I start with just a few books that introduce us to what amphibians are. Most amphibians eat insects, these an oak toad. After another break to nurse the baby, we are back at the kitchen table, finishing up learning about amphibians. I have um, more picture books to read. I have them draw a life cycle of a frog, and then I also ask them each to narrate. So my son tells me his narration, I write it down for him, and my daughter will write her own narration. And I have them each draw a picture of one or more amphibians to go with their narrations. The toddler is generally playing around us and at some point decides to take out some of her activities. So she's sitting at her little table, which is right next to the, the main table, uh, doing those activities with us. And that's it friends. It is time for dinner and putting the toddler to bed and read aloud time and then everyone else goes to bed. So I hope you enjoyed our day in the life and a glimpse at what our current homeschool routine looks like. Make sure to watch this video here if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.